do you have social anxiety? So you probably clicked this video wondering, what exactly is social anxiety? Well, in this video, we'll be going over several different symptoms of social anxiety disorder and some treatment options for social anxiety disorder. This video is just to inform you of the disorder itself and not meant to officially diagnose you. If you feel that some of this applies to you, please feel free to seek a local professional. If you are new to this channel, let me formally introduce myself. My name is Medard, or the Psych Dude, and I'm a board-certified psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. And in this channel, I go over several subjects to educate the public about mental health and to help reduce stigma associated with mental health, along with ways to improve your overall lifestyle. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos. So for medical professionals, social anxiety is broken up into several different diagnostic criteria, according to the DSM-5, and it is from diagnostic criteria A through J. So let's go over these. So criterion A, marked fear or anxiety about one or more social situations in which the individual is exposed to possible scrutiny by others. So the essential feature of social anxiety is a marked or intense fear or anxiety of social situations in which a person may be scrutinized by others, meaning when exposed to certain social situations like having a conversation or meeting unfamiliar people or even giving a speech in front of others or even eating or drinking in front of others, this is a social situation, and in this social situation, the individual re is really nervous or anxious about that situation. And when they are really nervous or anxious about that situation, they tend to have a fear of being exposed to that situation. So criterion B, the individual fears that he or she will act in a way or show anxiety symptoms that will be negatively evaluated. Basically what this means is when exposed to a social situation, the person may feel judged as anxious, weak, crazy, stupid, dirty, or even unlikable. The person may even fear that they will act or appear in a certain way or show anxiety symptoms such as blushing, trembling, sweating, or even stumbling over their own words. Criterion C, the social situations almost always provoke fear or anxiety. So with that being said, if the person becomes anxious only occasionally in the social situation, then they would not be diagnosed with social anxiety. So criterion D, the social situations are avoided or endured with intense fear or anxiety. The person will often avoid the feared social situations and if not avoided, they will have intense fear or anxiety. And this can result in avoidance being either extensive, which is refusing to go to school or any parties, or subtle, like limiting eye contact or diverting attention to others. Criterion E, the fear or anxiety is out of proportion to the actual threat posed by the social situation and to the socio-cultural context. Basically what this means is, the person will often overestimate the negative consequences of the social situation, but it is the medical professional's judgment on if it is out of proportion based on the assessment. Criterion F, the fear, anxiety, or avoidance is persistent, typically lasting for six months or more. So basically, this fear or anxiety or avoidance must last at least six months. Criterion G, the fear, anxiety, or avoidance causes clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other areas of functioning. Basically, what this means is the fear, anxiety, or avoidance must interfere with one's normal routine, either occupationally or academically, and the functioning within those and also social activities or relationships and cause significant distress in important areas of functioning. Criterion H, the fear, anxiety, or avoidance is not attributable to the physiological effects of a substance or another medical condition. The fear is not due to a substance such as medications, drugs, alcohol, 
and cannot be due to another medical condition. Criterion I, the fear, anxiety, or avoidance is not better explained by the symptoms of another mental disorder. And these mental disorders are like panic disorder, body dysphoric disorder, or autism spectrum disorder. Criterion J, if another medical condition is present, the fear, anxiety, or avoidance is clearly unrelated or is excessive. Meaning, if another medical condition such as Parkinson's, obesity, disfigurement from burns is present, the fear or anxiety is clearly unrelated. So more information about social anxiety disorder. So there are approximately 7% of people in the United States that actually suffer from social anxiety disorder. In general, higher rates of social anxiety disorder are found in females than in males in the overall population. The typical onset of individuals with social anxiety disorder have initial onset between ages 8 and 15 years old and the typical onset of social anxiety disorder may follow a stressful or humiliating event such as being bullied or even vomiting during a speech. So you're probably wondering what are treatment options for someone that does have social anxiety or if you have social anxiety disorder. Honestly, treatment depends on how much social anxiety disorder affects your ability to function in your daily life. But the two most common treatment options include psychotherapy or medications or both. Before I dive deeper into the treatment options, I definitely am going to be making a video going into further depth on the different types of options for treating social anxiety disorder. But primarily for psychotherapy, you're looking at CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy. And for medications, you're either looking at an SSRI or an SNRI, or there's different other types of medications like blood pressure medications or so forth. But the two most common ones are probably the SSRI or the SNRI. Well guys, this concludes our video. I um, hope you enjoyed this video and actually found it informational. This is the bare minimum in terms of what medical professionals use to diagnose social anxiety disorder. It is used as a guide. It's not necessarily showing you, oh, they have to meet every single one of these things in order for them to be diagnosed with social anxiety disorder. It's just using a guide in terms of seeing how much it is affecting their daily life. Well, if you found this video informational or if you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Again, my name is Bedard or The Psych Dude and I'll see you guys next time. Have a wonderful day, guys.